I'm saying hello to you from a small village in northern Finland. In fact, I'm just as far north here as you are in Yellowknife. And since I can't be there, I made this little video to tell you about a piece of music I wrote and specifically how it relates to the Northwest Territories. But there's a big problem. I've never been there before and couldn't get there in time. Yet I had to write a piece of music associated with it. Something about this seems wrong because there's no way for me to write music representative of history, culture, or land. So the music I wrote has nothing to do with complex topics like that. Instead, I will tell you about my creative strategy building this music, and you'll find out how my piece connects to an image of a specific natural phenomenon that instantly ignited my musical creativity. So what was this creative strategy? Well, here's how I got started. To spark my imagination, I set out to find a photograph of something in the Northwest Territories that has an interesting visual pattern. I spent several hours scrolling through hundreds of online images when suddenly something caught my eye. It was a very striking zigzag pattern of water, so unusual that it didn't even look real. I discovered I was looking at an aerial view of the Great Bear River situated in the Satu region of the Northwest Territories. The river is both short and bold. My musical piece also needed to be short and I wished it to have a bold quality in order to distinguish itself within a long set of other pieces. The instant I saw the Great Bear River, I sensed the possibility of a whole piece of music governed by sudden directional shifts of forward-flowing energy, just like this river. In addition to its flow and shape, I was also attracted to the term Great Bear. This gave me the emotional feeling that I could best describe as a great force of energy, perhaps of mystical origin, with a mind all of its own. I also thought about the musicians I was composing for and how this kind of energy could flow through them while performing the piece. Their long hair would become like the flowing water. So that's how the Great Bear River helped me characterize both the form and the soul of my piece. But that's still not enough information to build music. How should I create the melodies, the harmonies and the rhythms? Well, this part of my strategy is actually really boring. I simply dug up more geographical data about the Great Bear River and used those numbers to build my main theme. Something like this. The Great Bear River is 113 kilometers long. So if I translate 113 into a musical language that you may recognize, like Do Re Mi as 123, then 113 becomes Do Do Mi. I decided to put this first do up one position higher on the piano and I ended up lowering the sound of the mi note a little so it sounds a bit like the blues but you'll find out later why I did that. But this little melody of do do mi became like the common lego block that I used to build most of the melodies throughout the piece. Now what about harmony? Again more boring stuff. I look for more numbers this time from the river's only settlement a small village called Toledo. I used Toledo's geographical coordinates to build a pattern of notes like this. Did you like that? Well, I did because I never heard it before. And being a composer is kind of like being a musical explorer searching for interesting new sounds. I also liked how the flow of notes had a zigzag pattern along the white and black piano keys, not unlike the aerial view of the Great Bear River. The other thing I liked is by sounding some of these notes together they created crazy chords with special dissonances that want to flow towards resolution, just like gravity that pulls water through those curves along that river. Also, these dissonances resemble jazz dissonances familiar to me as a jazz improviser. So with a design method for melody and harmony, I wondered about style and rhythm. There doesn't seem to be extensive information written online about folk music style in the Northwest Territories. However, I did read about a folk music associated with the Dene people, characterized by driving pulse, syncopation, 
and vocalizations which use sounds that, to my ear, have some similarities to blues calls. Since the river motif of my piece would require driving pulse and syncopation already, I decided to keep going and just stylize my piece a little bit with the blues, such as taking the do do mi motif, which I talked about before, or one one three, and flattening the three or the mi. I also used bending notes typical of blues, and I made a more distinctive title for the piece, Great Bear River Blues, which not only sounds like fun, but when spoken, forms the foundational rhythm to the music, Great Bear River Blues, which looks like this in rhythmic notation. And then something amazing happened. I was reading more about Toledo, the settlement which derived the harmony to my piece, and I was delighted to learn that one of the most prolific composers of Dene music was born there in 1879 by the name of Yatsule. This connection confirmed to me, at least emotionally, that I was on a meaningful path. I guess there might be some connection or inspiration that the Great Bear River gave to this Toledo-born composer's music. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But at the very least, this discovery gave me the final boost of creative energy to finish writing my music, staying true to the course that I was on. Hey, so, um, hi. I'm now uh, actually in Tashkent, the uh, capital city of uh, Uzbekistan. And you know, all that stuff I was saying over there in Finland, um, it, it really actually does a kind of injustice to, to music itself in the sense that I'm using words and intellectual ideas, geography, uh, to somehow be representative of musical experience. And of course, that's uh, just not how it is. It's like expecting that by talking about a recipe and ingredients that somehow you'll start to taste that delicious food it's trying to make. It's the same in music. Words are impotent when it comes to accurately describing the, the essence of a musical experience. However, now that you have some information about how I designed this piece of music, perhaps it will open a channel so that you can experience more deeply the musical result inspired by your Great Bear River. My name is David Braid, and thank you all very much for listening.